Public Bank's founder and chairman emeritus Tan Sri Dr. Te Hong Piao passed away this Monday morning at the age of 92. In a media release, Public Bank's managing director and chief executive officer Tan Sri Te Alex said that they had passed away peacefully at 10.20 a.m., adding that it was a great loss to the banking group. On behalf of the board, management and staff, they extended their most heartfelt condolences and deepest sympathies to Te's family. One of Malaysia's wealthiest men, Te founded Public Bank in 1964 at the age of 35. Today, the bank is the country's third largest banking group by assets. Tay mentions in the media statement that upon relinquishing his CEO position, they had the foresight to put in place a clear management succession plan which helped to bring the bank to greater heights. Despite having retired as its chairman at the end of 2018, the bank's stakeholders, particularly minority investors, hold him in such high regard that until today, his name continues to be synonymous with the bank. Immediately after relinquishing the chairman post, Tay was conferred the positions of chairman emeritus and advisor to the bank. Tay held a 21.64% stake in Public Bank through his private investment vehicle, Consolidated Tay Holdings, and also directly held 0.64% of the bank. Bloomberg listed his holdings in the bank as his biggest assets. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim offered his condolences to Tay's family via his official Facebook account, adding that his passing will certainly leave a big void for the Public Bank family, the banking sector and the country. Former Bank Negara Governor Tan Sri Mohamed Ibrahim called Tay a giant within the banking fraternity and gave him credit for his contributions to the industry in terms of expanding products and services and access to credit for the economy. Following Tay's passing, LPI Capital was Bursa Malaysia's top loser after its share price fell 32 cent or 2.44 percent to close at 12 ringgit 80 cent. Public bank share price ended Monday down 1 cent or 0.23 percent at 4 ringgit 40 with 25.9 million shares traded. Tay was the second highest ranked Malaysian on the Bloomberg Billionaires Index after Robert Kwok with a 4 fortune of 6.43 billion US dollars. The Securities Commission has filed a civil suit in the Kuala Lumpur High Court against five individuals for allegedly perpetrating a scheme to defraud and or causing wrongful losses valued at $120.6 million to four public listed companies. In a statement, the SE said it filed the suit on November 29, 2022 against Tepo Yi, Lim Chai Guan, Sipo Yi, Francis Tan Hock Leng and Faisatul Ikmi Abdul Raza. It said the companies involved are Nextgram Holdings, RNA, Telecommunication Group, Asdion and Iritex Corp. SC alleges that they, Lim, Si and Tan in their various capacities as directors and officers of the four PLCs siphoned out proceeds of the company's fundraising exercises further abetted by Faisatul Ikmi. It said the aforesaid conduct of the quintet which took place between December 2013 and July 2014 was in contravention of Section 317A and 179 of the Capital Markets and Services Act 2007. In order to prevent dissipation of the assets of the defendants, the SC on December 1st, 2022, obtained an injunction from the KL High Court to restrain Te Lim C and Faisatul Ikmi from dealing with the monies in their respective bank accounts. The SC did not seek an injunction against Tan as he is an undischarged bankrupt. The SC said the High Court initially fixed December 12th for the defendants to respond to the injunction application. However, it said that following the non-appearance of the defendants, the High Court granted an ad interim injunction and fixed January 9th, 2023 for the defendant's response. Electronics manufacturing services provider NationGate Holdings is seeking to raise $165.5 million in its upcoming initial public offering. With an issue price of $0.38 cent per share and an enlarged share capital of 2.1 billion shares, the company is expected to have a market capitalization of $788.1 million once it debuts on January 12, 2023. This makes it the largest listing on the ACE market. NationGate is allocating $105.5 million of its IPO fund Funds, representing 63.8% of total gross proceeds for repayment of bank borrowings, while 48.4 million will be for working capital requirements. Another 5.9 million will be used to purchase additional machinery and equipment. 
Nation Gate Managing Director Ui Eng Leong says the company will add four surface mount technology assembly lines for its printed circuit boards. He says that upon the completion of the expansion of the SMT assembly lines within 36 months, Nation Gate's monthly production capacity is expected to increase by up to 38.4 million mounting points to a maximum of 1.3 billion mounting points per month. Looking ahead over the next three years, Ui says the company intends to expand its EMS business by expanding EMS offerings to existing customers which comprise multinational corporations with a diversified range of products as well as leverage its track record in the EMS industry to secure new customers. Capital A is positive that the group is poised for an earnings turnaround in 2023, says its CEO, Tan Sri Tony Fernandez. Speaking at the press conference held in conjunction with the launch of new features for its AirAsia Super app, Fernandez says he foresees three tailwinds that would help to lift the group's prospects in 2023. The first, he says, is the drop in jet fuel prices from its peak. Second is the stronger ASEAN currencies versus the US dollar. While the final positive is China eventually reopening its borders. In preparation for China opening up, Fernandez says the strategy is to take measures to return the grounded fleet back into service. To cope with the rising demand, the group has been gradually redeploying its fleet with the aim of having 140 operational aircraft by end 2022 and another 65 aircraft to be repaired and deployed by next year. Fernandez says that an improving airline business will have a knock-on effect on its digital businesses, namely the super app and big pay. He explains that the whole system that Capital A has been incubating over the last two years will come into force when the airline is fully back in operation, which he says makes 2023 potentially very profitable for the group. State-owned oil and gas company Petroleum Sarawak signed a memorandum of understanding with South Korea steelmaking company POSCO Group to collaborate in the development of carbon capture and storage business in Sarawak. In a statement, Petro said the companies will conduct a joint study of potential carbon storage sites in Sarawak, as well as transportation of carbon dioxide from South Korea to the CCS hub in the state. They will also study carbon dioxide injection and sequestration, solutions to reduce, mitigate and or avoid greenhouse gas emissions arising from the CCS opportunities and assess the technical and commercial feasibility of the CCS business, according to Petros. Petros also highlighted that the CCS industry aims to promote the development of Sarawak's massive sour gas reserves, which contain carbon dioxide. The company said the CCS business would enable Sarawak to ensure its long-term energy security, provide more local jobs in the green industry and provide an additional revenue source to the state.